Hey everybody, it's time for chapter 7 of the Chocolate Touch. All right, boys and girls, Miss Pimsel said, it's almost time for lunch. Clear up your things, paint pots securely closed, brushes washed, paintings unpinned and laid out to dry. Drawing boards stacked against the wall. Ah, there's the bell. Front row first, Timothy leading, then Robin in single file, go. John, alone, walks slowly in the, th in the throng, hurrying the along the corridors to the school cafeteria. The school was proud of the cafeteria, the food served in it. The room was spacious and bright, with windows all the way along one side, overlooking the playground and the playing fields beyond. The opposite side was wholly taken up by the shiny silver service counter. Several boys and girls were already settled at tables by the time John took his place in the line. Enviously, John noticed a boy at the nearby table suck straws dipped in a milk bottle that was full of frost. John could imagine the refreshing taste of cold, creamy milk. At another table, a group of girls were eating fat red cherries. John could almost feel the firm fruit on his tongue and the pleasure of biting through the tart, juicy pulp. The cherries must taste good. They must be thirst-quenching. John unhappily took a tray from the pile and slid it along the rails in the front of the top of the counter. He put a paper napkin, a glass, a gleaming spoon, a knife, and a fork on the tray. It seemed hardly worth the while, but he felt as he might as well try the food and drink. Perhaps, if I eat in a different way, without letting anything touch my lips, he muttered, my lunch won't all change to chocolate. He was not very hopeful. What? asked the boy standing next to him. Nothing, John said. I thought I heard you say something about chocolate, the boy said. I hope this is the day for chocolate cream pie, he added. That'd be super. On chocolate cream pie days of the past, John had been known to skip the main course so he might spend all his lunch money on dessert. The thought of four pieces of chocolate cream pie now suddenly made his stomach feel as though he were on a roller coaster, an uneasy, flippity jibberty sensation. John shuddered. Okay he commented, wrinkling up his nose. The other boy shrugged his shoulders and started to choose his meal. John took a plate of cold chicken and ham and potato chips and a crisp, moist lettuce and tomato salad. The white of the chicken, the pink of the ham, the gold of the potatoes, the pale green of the lettuce, and the rest of the tomato looked delicious. He almost took half a pint of milk, a thin crusted whole wheat roll, and a cold part of butter. Cold part of butter. The tumbler of water with ice cubes clinking against the glass, and a fresh fruit slices of oranges, and grapefruit and bananas and grapes. John's tray was loaded with just the sort of meal his mother was always trying to persuade him to eat. Until today, John had always thought it was pretty dull to eat sensible things, and when there were sweeter foods and drinks to be had. Today, however, the sensible things looked the most appetizing, and his mouth began to water in a new sticky way. John paid for the lunch with his money his mother had given him, and went to an empty table and sat down. His fingers trembling slightly with eagerness, he cut a slice of lettuce. His fork went right through the leaves with a promising crunch. He stuck the prongs of the fork into a mouth-sized piece of lettuce and carefully inserted it into his mouth. The lettuce didn't touch his wide-stretched lips. John's teeth came together in crisp layers of sweet chocolate. He took a small piece of potato chip, tilted back his head until he was looking straight up at the ceiling, and dropped the morsel straight down into his throat. He felt it go down a sharp fragment of sweet chocolate. He tried the milk, the ice water, the fruit. Every solid and liquid that he sampled was transformed as soon as it entered his mouth. Then he became aware of a shocking novelty that he hadn't noticed at breakfast. At the rim of each glass, there was a small semicircle of an opaque brown. The bowl of his spoon and the prongs of his fork had become brown. As John watched, horrified, the areas of magic chocolate slowly spread until at last the glasses and silverware were all solid chocolate. The trouble was unquestionably getting worse. John's scalp tightened with fear. What am I going to do? He asked himself miserably. Oh dear, oh dear, what is going to happen to me? Leaving his tray of chocolate food and drinks and utensils, 
John stumbled away from the cafeteria and out to the playground. I hope you guys enjoyed today's chapter. I will see you again tomorrow.